more than ever. It's it is important to remember the true meaning of Christmas. Don't miss Charles Dickens' immortal classic, Scrooge. What exactly does that ad have to do with Scrooge? Nothing. Why? Oh, he's fired? But it's Christmas. You don't like Christmas much, do you? Like it? I love it. It's cold, and people stay home and watch television. Ad revenues go up 30%. All these idiots are going to be home watching the boob tube for me tonight. I am the biggest fan that Christmas ever had. Grace! You are going to be visited by three ghosts. Three ghosts? Three ghosts, Frank. <laughs> The first one tomorrow at noon. I don't hear any partying in that boat, Elliot. Great! In 1988 saw Bill Murray return to the big screen after a short break from working to spend time with his family, only doing a few cameos since Ghostbusters, such as Little Shop of Horrors. He returns to starring Scrooge, directed by Richard Donner. Richard Donner, as many know, as the director who brought Superman to the big screen and also produced Goonies and Lethal Weapon. The film was marketed with references to Ghostbusters, which had been a great success four years earlier. In the USA, the tagline was Bill Murray is back among the ghosts only this time it's three against one. Scrooged was made on a good budget of around $32 million and made a good profit that Christmas and was well received by critics and the general public. The movie tries to do something new with the Charles Dickens classic A Christmas Carol instead of being a direct translation of the book like many previous films. Bill Murray plays Frank Cross who is a cynical television program executive. He has found great success and wealth but only by becoming cold-hearted and cruel to everyone around him. His ruthless concentration on his career has cost him his true love, Claire Phillips. It has also alienated him from his brother James and ruined any chance of having a happy and fulfilling life. Frank overworks his assistant Grace Cooley, forcing her to constantly break plans with her family and neglect her mute son Calvin. On a disturbing TV commercial that Frank personally produced is criticised by timid yes man Elliot. Frank responds by firing him on Christmas Eve. When Frank is given the task of heading up a live Christmas Eve broadcast of A Christmas Carol, his life begins to mirror the story he's producing. The decomposing corpse of his mentor, media mogul Lou Hayward, comes to tell him the errors of his ways and to announce the impending visitation of three ghosts. Adding to Frank's stress, his boss takes the liberty of hiring an assistant, Bryce Cummings, who is secretly after Frank's job. The ghost of Christmas past appears as a New York cab driver and takes Frank back to his childhood in 1955 and to his late teens in 1968 when he had his first job at the TV station. In 1969, for his anniversary with Claire and 71, the year in which he chose his job as Frisbee the Dog over her, the sequences show Frank gradually becoming the man he is in the present. The ghost of Christmas present then appears as a life-size pixie who delights in hitting Frank. She shows him how Grace's family live in poverty because of his stinginess and Frank gets to see his brother at the Christmas party he turned down earlier on. James comments on how much he misses Frank. After the second ghost has visited Frank, Elliot returns drunk and angry, storms the office with a shotgun and tries to murder Frank. He runs into an elevator to escape Elliot and encounters the ghost of Christmas future, a seven foot tall ghoul with a TV screen for a face. He appears and shows Frank a future in which Calvin has ended up in a mental hospital. Claire has become cold and uncaring as he is, and only James and James's wife attend Frank's cremation. Scrooge has a great mix to its casting. Aside from Bill Murray, you have John Glover, who many remember from Gremlins 2, and younger viewers will remember him as playing Lionel Luther in the TV show Smallville. Bobcat Goldthwaite as Elliot has a very distinctive screechy voice, and has been a stand-up comedian for years, and I first saw him in Police Academy 2, and he returned for the following sequels. Karen Allen plays the character Claire effortlessly. She made some great choices with her career in the 80s, from Indiana Jones to Starman. 
the relationship between her characters and Bill seems very genuine and definitely holds the film together. If that didn't work, then the film would definitely fall apart. Bill Murray's actual brothers star in the movie as well. His older brother, Brian Doyle Murray, plays his dad when he goes back in time to see himself as a child. John Murray plays his brother in the film and does a fantastic job with it. And Joel Murray plays a guest at the Christmas party hosted by James. The visual effects in Scrooge are very impressive, which are supervised by Eric Brevik, who has worked on Total Recall, Hook, and more recently stuff like John Carter. The movie has everything from great makeup effects to puppets and optical effects. They all blend very well together, and for a movie that's 24 years old, it still stands up. The score to the movie was composed by Danny Elfman. This was one of his early scores, and he had just previously worked on Beetlejuice. When you watch the film, you may notice classic themes and the familiar style Elfman uses, in his collaborations with Tim Burton. Many of the cues featuring choir music in the movie he uses again in Batman Returns and they sound identical. The movie also incorporates many pop songs from U2 and Van Morrison. Annie Lennox and Al Green's track was released as a single and a music video was produced to coincide with the film which was a cover of Put A Little Love In Your Heart. Siskel and Ebert were split on their opinions on Scrooge, with Gene Siskel commenting on the great humour and the connection between Bill's character Frank and ex-girlfriend Claire. Roger Ebert criticises the movie, however, for what he felt its lack of humour, but more concerned about its anger and hostility that comes across. This is a most inventive and very funny film, I'd say about half the time, when it's setting up the introduction to the Bill Murray character. Then with the ghost, it starts to wander into areas of weak imitation of the Ghostbusters, and yet Bill Murray is absolutely hilarious throughout. It's a close call, but I'm giving this movie thumbs up for its big laughs early on and a sweet relationship between Bill Murray and Karen Allen toward the end of the picture. Now, I didn't like it at all, and I'll tell you why. I felt that I was picking up throughout the movie more of an aura of anger and hostility than I was one of comedy. For example, at the end when Bill Murray gives his long speech about brotherhood and loving each other and the Christmas spirit and the whole cast is behind him, that seemed almost like a frenzied harangue. It seemed like he was protesting too much, that he was pushing it. It didn't have any gentleness or any real warmth in it. It seemed like a guy having a nervous breakdown instead of having a, a Christmas message for us. And throughout the movie, I felt an undercurrent of a lot of anger and high tension throughout this film, rather than the humor you'd be looking for. Well, I only found it in the area where I was talking about the ghosts when they go for special effects, and indeed it is a high-tech kind of movie. I mean, obviously, there's somebody had their eye on Ghostbusters. It was made by Richard Donner, who uh, made Superman, so they yeah. have a special effects mentality, and they think that's going to be commercial for kids. That's the weakness of the film. But, I, I mean, you, were, you had to be amused at the character that Bill Murray plays at the top of the film. I mean, that's a very funny well, character. Well, I think you could probably even improve on some of the jokes about television. But I want to okay. ask you something. Go ahead. A long time ago, you had this interview with George Scott that you often quote, where he told you about the three things you should look for in movie yeah. acting. Yeah. The third one was joy of performance. Yes. Did you get any joy of performance out of Bill Murray? Yes, I, I don't did. think he enjoyed making this oh, picture. Well, I, I have no idea, and, and I don't know whether any actor likes doing the work that they do, and I don't know that I care. I mean, it, it wouldn't seem like it would be well, fun. Well, your test, you want to care. No, no, it wouldn't seem like it was fun for Robert De Niro to be play the character in Raging Bull, but I do believe that Bill Murray's having a good time there. He's ad-libbing like he usually does, and it seems very funny. Well, I don't think the ad-libs work either, but we're not talking about fun. We're talking about joy of performance. I understand. I think I think he had a good time. What I like about this movie is that it does something different with the Charles Dickens story. There are many versions of the novel that are being put on film, and recently with Christmas Carol starring Jim Carrey, when I saw it advertised, I thought to myself, do we really need another retelling of the classic story? You know what's going to happen at the end. With Scrooge, however, you get something original. It does a twist on the characters, for example, the role of Tiny Tim who in the novel was really unwell, but in this version he has been traumatised by seeing his father die and has chosen not to speak anymore. The movie isn't perfect and there are issues with it. I do agree with what Roger Ebert said. I feel the ending when Bill Murray realises the error of his ways, the tone is very uneven. It does come across like he's lost his mind and having a nervous breakdown. It may be down to the director Richard Donner letting Bill Murray ad lib his way through it and he kind of falls out of character. Bill even quotes a line from Little Shop of Horrors. Also, when he goes back into the past and sees the argument he had with Claire on the set of Frisbee the Dog, Claire suggests they separate for a while when Bill says he wants to go to dinner with his boss and doesn't want to lose the opportunity to help boost his career. 
Claire suddenly wants to break up. Now it is implied Bill's character has become a little obsessed with work, but it just seems forced just to move the story along or to quickly create a separation between the characters and doesn't seem real at all. The emotional core of the movie isn't very strong. It won't leave you upset in the areas that are intentionally sad because its tone struggles to balance it all. The ghost of Christmas present can be very annoying. All they seem to do is just fight, constantly punching and slapping each other. I didn't really understand why the fighting was necessary. Despite its issues, which there aren't many, it's still a fun Christmas flick that should be included in your collection for Christmas viewing. There are some great funny scenes which you can see here. It's Lee Majors, the six million dollar band. Santa, is there a back way out of this place? Of course there is, Lee, but this is one Santa that's going out the front door. It don't matter a hill of beans what happens to me. The world couldn't afford it if anything happened to you. Now, you stay put. Oh, that's very nice of you, Lee. 7 o'clock, Psycho C Santa's workshop. Eat this. And only Lee Majors can stop them. The night the reindeer oh. die. Hey. Cross, I am the censor, and I will not allow this costume on the air. Why not? Well... Specifically, you can see her nipples. I want to see her nipples. But this is a Christmas show. Well, Charles Dickens would have wanted to see her nipples then. Uh, you, can, uh, you can hardly see them nipples. See, and these guys are really looking. I'm sorry. You know, I thought you were Richard Pryor. He's here for me, come on! All right, come on, give it to me! You think I'm afraid of you? The day I've had! I'm alive, and so are you! Hey! You glad to see me, or is this a shotgun in your pocket? My friends and I always make a list of films to watch before Christmas, just to get you into the spirit. Movies and TV shows such as Die Hard, Gremlins, Elf, Santa Claus the Movie, Home Alone, Nightmare Before Christmas, and of course, the Christmas episode of Bottom. In future, I think studios should go in the direction Scrooge went with trying to do something modern and original with the classic Charles Dickens story, and instead of doing a direct translation of the book, it seems more refreshing with doing a twist on a story everyone knows, so it can make it more exciting and less predictable. Bill Murray is great at playing a complete bastard, but he does struggle with some of the emotional scenes, but I think down to his experience at the time. He could do it so easily now in his career, but I think he perfected his acting abilities in Groundhog Day, where he shows similar emotions and you care more about him during the course of the movie. I do recommend Scrooged, it's by no means perfect, but it's a joy to watch Bill Murray be a complete arsehole, and it does have a good Christmas vibe to it, and it should get you into the Christmas spirit. If you enjoyed the video, you can find more on my YouTube channel, and also you can follow me on Twitter. If you want to help support the channel, you can donate through Patreon and receive monthly perks such as updates on the latest news on my channel, early access to reviews and commentaries before they go live on YouTube. Even the smallest donation can help keep this channel going. Thank you.